Hey everyone, Kevin here. Billionaire hedge fund manager Ray Dalio did a Q&A, well, I guess more of like an ask me anything AMA on Reddit today. And I thought, hey, why not go through and read off some of his answers to see what a billionaire hedge fund manager's responses and reactions are to what's happening in the market today. And then I'll obviously add my two cents and we can have a dialogue about what our thoughts are over this. Now, keep in mind, back in November, I made a video about Ray Dalio and his one point $1.5 billion bet that the market would fall in March of 2020. Well, unfortunately, despite Ray making this crazy, amazing, and perfectly timed bet, Ray Dalio's hedge fund did still lose about 20% on the worst day of this last slide. He mentioned the reason for that was having basically no way of predicting that there would be a pandemic, which you can't blame him. But the fact that he made that initial bet is still pretty amazing. And after all, being a billionaire hedge fund manager, I'm absolutely interested in seeing what he has to say. Let's get right into it. So this is probably my favorite question and a lot of people think this is a great question as well. Hey Ray, I was wondering what you think about the future of the dollar with the unprecedented amount of money injected into the economy from 2008 to now. How will these stimuluses affect future generations in terms of wealth accumulation? Basically, we're getting loaded up with a bunch of printed money and how is that gonna affect our kids? Which talking about Kids, life insurance, link down below. Two free stocks, Weeble, down below. So here's what Ray Dalio says to that, which you can read it, but I'm going to distill it. Because if you read it, it's a little on a hedge fundy billionaire level. Basically, he's saying the dollar and the United States is in a great spot because the dollar is the world's currency reserve, which basically means other countries kind of rely on the dollar. And the fact that we control the most powerful printing press in the world is a good thing in the short term for us and the dollar. In the long term though, the dollar's power will weaken when either we stop turning the printing press and then companies with high amounts of debt end up going bankrupt, or the second thing that could potentially happen is we print so much money that the dollar becomes less valuable and people stop wanting to use it as a currency reserve and that could lead to inflation. So in the short term, yay, we own the best printing press in the world. In the longer term, yeah, companies that are really highly leveraged up with a lot of debt are gonna have problems. Or we'll start seeing some inflation, in which case you want to be investing in inflation protected assets like real estate or stocks, or treasury bonds that are inflation protected called tips. Here's another question. Some rich dude came out and said that a pandemic could unwind the passive investment boom. This is the same Michael rich dude, by the way, who said that index funds are in a big bubble. He said that, I don't know, like six months ago. And then he basically says, are there going to be problems for ETFs like Vanguard and so on and so forth? Ray responds by dodging the question about Michael, which is a very smart thing to do, and goes straight into saying, I think that active investors will now have a great opportunity to outperform index funds because of how different the conditions of the companies and items in them are from one another. In other words, he's just trying to separate that, hey, look, index funds kind of treat everything the same, but there might be different opportunities within these index funds. And that's why smarter active investors might have a better shot at picking picking their own trades now, or rather than picking index funds. Now look, I'm not gonna be the pot that calls the kettle black because after all, I am a real estate investor who encourages you to invest in real estate who also sells an amazing real estate investing course. I get it. Ray is a hedge fund manager who actively trades. All these sort of biases aside though, I kind of have to agree with Ray. I think there are many more opportunities in individual opportunities or picking the, the biggest losers, so to speak, in my opinion, than there are in just throwing money straight into an index fund. My take. 
Then Ray gets this question from somebody that says, hey Ray, you've talked a lot about the cycles of basically people taking on debt and then paying off debt. How is that going to apply today? Which in response, he says this, and he starts by talking about history a little bit and talks about how people who hold bonds at low or negative interest rates are gonna be doing quite a bit of head scratching and going, man, do I really wanna own cheap bonds right now? That is bonds that that yield very, very little money or debt that yields very little money. And then he goes on to say that he also believes cash isn't going to be a good option. So in other words, he's kind of answering this by saying bonds, probably not a good choice and cash probably not a good choice right now. But he doesn't really go as far as telling you what you should invest in. My guess is when you take away cash and you take away bonds that yield nothing, you're pretty much only left with either corporate debt you can go buy or stocks or real estate. So anti-cash, and anti-low yielding bonds. Here's an interesting one. Could you share more about your process? How do you schedule time for writing and research? How do you decide what to read? How do you take notes? How do you force yourself to write or does it come naturally? Any tips? All right. This is Ray's elongated response where basically he says that he looks to other experts that he respects, which is fair, but he also says that everything kind of goes in a cycle for him, that things are iterative, which just means they're repeated, and that he triangulates this stuff, which to try to make sense of this, I drew a picture. Here's Ray right here, and basically he writes down what he thinks as the number one, which is actually really good because I often Oftentimes I catch myself asking, all right, is Delta a good buy right now? And then I need to pause and think to myself, well, what do I think? What, what is my initial assumption? I don't know, I think they're gonna go bankrupt. Well, what are the odds they're gonna go bankrupt? I don't know, 15%, but what if they get a bailout? Well, they'll probably get a bailout. I write these things down. That's actually a really good idea. Then after you write down your thoughts, compare to what other people are saying. Well, they think it's a 50% chance of bankruptcy. Well, I wrote down 30. Why? Then research. Oh, okay, maybe that's why they think that. That's why they think that. And now you can go and kind of revise what you think and then take your new revision and go compare it to what other people are saying or what other people have updated their thoughts to be. This is really good. I like this. This, like right here, A plus, check a mark. Yeah, good. Now here we've got somebody who tried to nail Ray. And a lot of people have been lately because Ray in January said that cash is trash. And obviously anybody who's been watching the stock market in the last two months looks now at people like Warren Buffett and says, dang, I wish I had a lot of cash sitting around like that, dude. I could go shopping right now and I'd be getting a lot of stuff on sale. Now to that, Ray responds with this which you can read, but basically what Ray is saying is, hey, look, cash might look like a king right after values fall. But remember that in the long run, cash produces what he calls negative real returns. Negative real returns basically means that inflation chews away your purchasing power because as you keep cash, other things go up in value and your cash becomes worth less. But it's not just other things that go up in value when there's inflation, debt becomes less valuable. So if you're sitting around with cash, you're losing in both directions. If there's inflation and you have debt, you win. If there's inflation and you have assets, you win. If there's inflation and you have cash, you lose. Cash only works in a deflationary time. But Ray says in deflationary times, rather than have cash, I'd rather have some gold or some certain other stocks, which he doesn't go into what those deflation protection stocks might be. I don't know, maybe gold mining companies. We have no idea, but this is very interesting. He's defending that cash is always screwed in an inflationary environment. And because what's the Fed doing? Print, 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 print. This is symbolic for the printing press. If we haven't caught up to that yet, this is the printing press. 
<laughs> then do not hold cash. So I get it. I, I get it. You know, in the long term, Ray is right. In the short term, yeah, he kind of got burned. Here's a short one I'm just gonna read off. Hey, is it passion or is it grinding? Like what, what basically drives you? And he goes, it's passion that pulls you, but sometimes it feels like climbing Mount Everest. So there's a fair bit of grinding involved to get there. In, in other words, like your motivation for getting to the top of Mount Everest might be your passion. That's like your goal, the reason you're doing it. But yeah, Going from the ground to the top is gonna be a grind. But that's fair. This is a good one. I like this. So here's a 14 year old who actually started getting involved in finance at 12. At 13, bought 14 shares of Baba, which is Alibaba. How much does that even sell for these days? Okay, about $200. That's like $2,800. That's more than I had at 14. Good for this person right here. That's awesome. And, and so the person basically wants to know, the 14-year-old wants to know, hey, you know, what, what should I be doing if I want to be an investor or, you know, follow in the footsteps of Warren Buffett? I like this. This is a really good question from a 14-year-old. Dude, good for you. Okay, and to that... Ray says, to me, it sounds like you're halfway there at 14 years old. And now the main thing that you need to do is play the game. I got hooked at about the same age and found that by loving the game, I found my way because there's no path to progress. That's as good as having actual experiences and reflecting on them. Man, that is good. So in other words, do whatever you got to do to convince yourself to start. Open that stock trading account. Get your two free stocks with Webull. And start getting educated in something that's going to get you in the game. I love that. And honestly, you know, I, I me mean, as a real estate investor and a stock investor, but real estate 90%, I really agree with that. Because, uh, you know, when I first bought my first house, I was scared. It's, it's overwhelming to think about all of the things related to real estate in a house. Now, when I do in our private live streams, I'm analyzing people's deals. People send me a deal. I go, mm, I don't like this deal. Here's why, why, why. Or other times I go, this is a good deal. The thing you're worried about is not something to be worried about. That's a good deal. Buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so it comes with experience. I love that. That's good. So this is sort of buried into another question. Here I'm just going to focus on this part that's buried because it's interesting. Basically, what is on Ray Dalio's mind right now? What are his fears? In other words, what are things that we should pay attention to? Number one, the inabilities of the European Central Bank and the Bank of Japan to stimulate the economy. Kind of like if the ECB and the Bank of Japan can't stimulate their economies, why would the Federal Reserve be able to? That's a problem. Problem number two, the big wealth gap we have and sort of this populism 99% uh, versus the 1%. Number three, going into the elections around the world and the resulting fiscal policy moves that we're going to see. So just so you know, fiscal policy is how the government spends money on its budget. Things like government hiring, more employees, uh, construction, infrastructure, large scale educational improvements, things like that. Trump tax cuts for corporations. That's uh, fiscal policy. Uh, so that's very important to him. The fourth thing that he says is very important is the rise of China and kind of how military competition is going to reshape the United States dominance. And number five, the impact of big data, artificial intelligence, and other thinking like technologies. These factors, I feel we must pay attention to the most in thinking about our investments, but even more importantly, our well-being. Well, obviously, so take care of our well-being, our own mental state. But aside from our own well-being and mental state, very interesting. So pay attention to central banks' abilities to actually operate, what that means for our investments. And maybe do we focus more on companies that are into virtual reality, big data, artificial intelligence now, because maybe those are going to be the survivors during a time where we see more military competition and more shifting of world powers going forward crazy. Okay. Interesting. Here's what I'm going to paraphrase. Basically, what could he change looking backwards? And he says at 33, he wishes he would have been less arrogant and less sort of cavalier in his own beliefs and let him be a little bit more open to the idea of potentially being wrong because he believes that would have let other smart people's thoughts 
enter into his world and he would have kind of been able to do that iterative cycle and revised his thinking for the better. Uh, and, and this is, this I really like because this is something I always say, I, I say this regularly on videos, you know, don't believe everything I say 100%, take my ideas or other ideas you hear compare those to your own, but then also listen to other people and see what they say and then kind of figure out for yourself which ideas do you believe in. This is why I always say like, hey, you know, if, if 20 people have a course on how to invest in stocks, work your way through them, compare, you know, and then make your own mind up and kind of see what works for you. Well, there you go. All you can do now is take out the hammer and Slam that like button. By the way, if you send me messages on Instagram or post in Discord, any kind of articles or topics you want me to comment about, I will gladly do that. There is a link in the description below. It's totally free to join my Discord. And there's a little section for asking questions about the stimulus or submitting news articles or general chat or stock chat. I'd love to talk to you all there. So join the Discord or send me a DM on Instagram. Discord, I'm gonna be way more responsive in though. Make sure to get your two free stocks, folks. And and until next time.